this is where we are going to hand over to Nathan. Um, so Nathan, I'm just checking the time as well. So Nathan is now going to do a demonstration consuming that LGS file into Cloudworks. So obviously we've published the data out and the LGS file is now floating wherever, you know, on a server or on a hard disk. Um, how do we then use it? So this digital handshake of Reg360 across into our Cloudworks products. So we're gonna look at Cloudworks 2020 for Revit. Um, and at this point, I'll hand over to Nathan. Thank you, Paul. I thought that was a very good explanation of a range of new features we have for our software. So moving on to Cloudworks, just to give a quick introduction of what Cloudworks is. Cloudworks is essentially our answer to a bolt-on to the um, CAD and BIM offering packages. But today I'm going to focus on the updates within Revit. So we have 2D workflow for wall and room outlines. We have auto-fitting tools such as wall fitters window fitters and door fitters, improvements to our pipe fitters, and improvements to how we can navigate the point cloud within um, true space, for example. So I'm just going to jump to my screen here. So now I'm in our Revit environment, and immediately you can see I'm on the Cloudworks tab. And what I'm able to do from here is tap into our LGS files that I have previously created. So I'm going to go to our house scan, and open that up. So instantaneous loading of the LGS file. Now the reason I use the LGS file is because it holds the metadata, the geotag data, and the point cloud data all in one file, as Paul suggested earlier, but it also renders very quickly and is very clear data. So I'll just run over the features in Cloudworks very briefly. From the left, we have ways to import, as I've just shown locally, but also from a server. We have ways to set levels, which will become apparent in a second ways to clip and segment the data accordingly, and ways to auto-fit features such as pipe, wall, etc. There's very good rendering tools, so we can change to intensity mode or the true color mode if you had imagery turned on, and ways to slice up that data and extract poly lines, for example. Moving on to clash managers for those construction workflows, and onwards to exporting points into families. So this is a semi-detached dwelling to give you a bit of background about the job itself. It was captured with an RTC 360, upstairs and downstairs externally as well. It took from site to this product you see on the screen now about one hour and a half. This is because of the speed of the RTC, but also the speed of the registration workflow as well. So the first thing I'm doing here is taking away all the data I don't need. So I just have the house in show. I can change this clip then to house. This means I can turn off the full site or just hone in on the house itself. The next thing I always do when I start a new project in Revit from a point cloud is create my levels. But to do this, I like to create a section. So using the clipping manager here, again, we have fencing tools, but we also have ways to clip across the X axis, Y axis and Z axis. So if I take the X axis and take a nice clean section through this whole building, as you can see here, I can now set my levels. Now you're one, probably wondering why my background is black and not white. Well, if I change to intensity view, it becomes very apparent. That point cloud stands out far better against a black background. You can change this in your settings over here. So the next thing I need to do is create my levels within Revit. So traditionally, how you would do this would be a manual process, but luckily using Cloudworks, we can set levels by point. So just by clicking the ceiling level there, I can go ground floor ceiling, for example. And automatically, this will create a ceiling plan. Now, this is important because everything in Revit is uh, parametric. So for those of you who use Revit will understand this, but if you don't, basically Revit needs point A and point B to work. So what I'm creating here is point A and point B for my walls. So I'm creating my ground floor level as well. And, but it automatically creates floor plans for me or ceiling plans, as you can see in the, the tree on the left here. So now that I've created my levels, if I jump into my elevation, like so, I'm automatically given the levels constrained within Revit. Now, traditionally, you would have to do these manually. Imagine I have a tower block, a very large building with lots of floors this will help extract those levels for you very quickly. So now I'm happy with my levels, I'm just going to turn that slice off, jump back into my 3D view, 
and navigate to the area I want to work with today. So what I would like to do with you guys is model this run of wall, model this run of wall, auto fit the, the window, auto fit the door, and all of this will be done for the auto fitted means. So the next thing I need to do is create a quick slice across the whole building to essentially have a top down view, much like your true slicer in Red360. So for a click of a button, I can use my slicing tools here and I get a very nice clean set of slice across the whole building. Again, this data is with the RTC, low resolution inside, but it gives me very nice results. This has now been transferred to my clipping manager. So if I rename the old section slice, so I know which one I'm working with, note is turned off. And this one can be my ground floor slice, so I know which is which. If I change this to be, say, 300 mil, I now, will now get more points for, of coverage. I potentially don't want to hit this worktop in here in the kitchen, so if I move the points forward a bit, there we go, I can now auto-fit my wall within this run here. So if I change to this wall tool here and choose the select two points method, there's a range of methods, but for this workflow, I'm gonna do select two points because I wanna pick the inner skin and the outer skin. I'm gonna constrain the bottom of the wall to the ground floor level, all set by these levels that we've done within Cloudworks previously. Um, constrain the top to the ground floor ceiling. And I want to use the finished face exterior in this instance because I want the wall to be placed based on the finished face. If I hit the internal skin, the external skin, this will now give me uh, a wall thickness. It's telling me the wall is 348 mil point one. I don't work to dims like this, so I'm gonna be working to 350 mil to round it up. I'm gonna change it to a default wall and override the name. The reason it's default, those of you that work in scan to bim you're not always given the make of the wall. If you're scanning an existing building, you don't necessarily know the inner leaf or the outer leaf. So I'm gonna create that wall. So it's automatically placed that wall where I need it to be. I'm gonna run this wall all the way down to the end of the building. And then I'm going to do the same here. But I'm also now going to model this section of wall here exactly the same way as I did previously. So again, I run into my uh, auto fit wall, select two points, select ground floor, select ground floor ceiling, and use finish face exterior. It's exactly the same workflow in internal, external, navigate to the standardized wall that I created earlier down here. There we go. So now I want to run this into the wall there. I'm gonna jump back a step and just hide these elements for a second. The reason being it will become apparent when I create the doors and the windows. So. What I would like to do is create a fence for this door here. This will save into the clipping manager. And hide. I want to also create a fence for the window. Clipping manager, call this window like so and then turn everything back on and hide all elements. Perfect. So now that I have my all my views set up, I wanna to start to model the doors and the windows. Turn this back off, there we go. So I still have the slice turned on and if I turn this slice off and turn the door slice on, you're probably wondering where the door has gone, but if I click the wall, now I just have a clear point cloud of the door that I want to model. Now, if I go to my door fitting tool and highlight the fence tool rather than two points, the reason I've made this point cloud honed in on the door is so that I'm not picking up any points that I do not want. So if I use the fence tool, I can very easily highlight around the door. It's gonna give me a standardized type, so it's looking to me to be an 875 door by 240 in this instance. Create new type. Straight away, it's automatically placed that door correctly for me. So moving on, we can now 
go back to our clipping manager, turn the door off, turn the window on, click the window, and we should be able to do the same workflow here. One seven eight five one zero. We'll go one zero six five. Like so. So now we have uh, successfully modeled all these elements without me having to really do much work at all, other than jumping in and out the clipping manager. So you can see here, there's our door, there's our window, et cetera, et cetera. But what I can also do is jump into the tr true color of the point cloud, like so. But I can also turn the point cloud off. There you go. So the next thing I'm going to do is jump into another demonstration very quickly, revolving around auto-fitting columns. So if you bear with me, I'm going to open up a new LGS file. Uh, if you have any questions, please just drop them in the box. So I'm going to open up a larger LGS file. And this time I'm going to show the true space functionality. There's a load of columns running down this building. We'll model them quite quickly, hopefully. So I'm going to jump into this true space. Those of you, uh, I'm based in Manchester. You might recognize very quickly where this was, this point cloud is. <laughs> so as you can see, this is in the Manchester United Hospitality Suite. What I'm able to do is navigate within the point cloud as if I'm on the scanner position, much like Paul showed you earlier within Jetstream and TrueView. True it's by far the easiest way to navigate a point cloud. So I want to model all these columns here. So if I jump to this column tool, there's going to be a quick upgrade because I've got the latest release of Revit. And I'm going to go round column. OK, but I'm not going to use the Revit window. I'm going to use this window in TrueView here. So if I click here, it's going to jump a new window and it's going to want me to create a column that's 690 mil in diameter. I'm happy with that. I'm going to create the column. I'm going to create another one here. It looks to me to be a standardized column type, so I'm just going to use the last one I created. Again, here, standardized again, again here standardized again and then we've got four columns very quickly placed so i'm going to highlight these one two three and four and i'm going to jump back to my 3d view and i'm going to go into true space again this time i'm going to jump into the thing Mm. That's not where I wanted to go. So if I just jump back to here and go back to five, you can see how you can quickly navigate the point cloud very easily. So if I jump back to the scan position I was in and take a look at these columns this time, and they look to me to be varying sizes, so I can't be, it's not going to be as standard as last time. So if I jump back to the column tool, round column, and click here like so create a new type it looks to me to be a 910 column click this column this one looks to be to be a a25 column so you've got to be careful check this box not all the columns are going to be same size and then again on this column here and i'm as we predicted they are standard columns sometimes so i can use this a25 because it's the nearest number to the 826.3 like so Again, one, just to show you, two, three. Now I'm going to navigate down the center of this building, like so, and finish off the two last columns. If I was using the traditional means of point clouds and modeling, I'd probably still be on the first column in all honesty. So if I hit column, round column, select this column on the left, 817, we'll go with an 820. 
go with the one on the right. Looks to me to be standardized again, and I'm happy with that. So now we need to check that uh, all of our point the, um, columns have come in correctly. So if I go to this right view here, the back view, I'm going to take a slice across the whole building, like so. I'm going to render it to the intensity view. These are all the tools I've taught you about in the previous demonstration. I'm going to change my clip to be roughly, let's have a think, 600 mil. And then I'm going to use my 3D navigation. And there you can see very nicely the point cloud aligned with the columns. Yeah, this is an, almost like a true slicer. This is just a sanity check. And if I jump back into 3D view two, you could even look at it quite close up. That's the end of the column demonstration, but I do have one more little element to show you. It's quite on theme. Um, we're all potentially remote working or working from home. So what I'm going to actually do now is instead of tap into a local file, tap into a server over in Germany and drag some data from that server within the Jetstream Enterprise application built into Reg um, Cloudworks. Bear with me, I am streaming this to you live as well so there is some strain on the internet and here i can see a range of different data sets from blk data to rtc data but i'm going to show you some blk data today just to reiterate none of this is held on my computer this is live streamed from a server in germany and in a couple of moments you'll see the blk data on the screen there we go so in real time, I can navigate this data just like I was with the LGS file. So just to give you a quick overview of what the BLK to go data looks like, if I put a slice across this building for you, there you go, very nice. So if you, there you go, very nice data. We can still draft all these walls quite easily. And again, all these functions are the same just like your LGS file. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm now going to pass you back to Paul Burrows, and if you have any questions, please just drop them in the box. Thank you very much.